Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today we're going to be making pectin. Now, pectin is basically the thing that makes jams turn into jam, otherwise you just have sort of, you know, a, a mess of um, sticky fruits. Um, it can be found in lots of fruits like apples, pears, that kind of thing, but not in cherries and strawberries and various other things. So you want to make strawberry jam, you either buy sugar with pectin in it, so jam making sugar, or you make your own. Uh, we are lucky enough to have access to lots of fresh apples. This is from a friend of ours orchard. And I'm going to be showing you how to make the pectin from that. Now most people use the entire apple and then strain off the, the bits they don't need, leaving just the water behind, and chucking all that away. I'm going to show you how to make um, the pectin from the waste parts of the apple, and that way we can actually go ahead and make some apple sauce or possibly cider, you know what I'm like. But we'll see. Anyway, let's get on. First thing we need to do is wash the apples thoroughly because we are going to be using the skin and the cores, so the skin needs to be clean. Then what I'm going to do is peel and core the apples, keep the peel and the core, that is what we're using for the pectin. Obviously keep the rest of the apple too for something else, but most people would throw that away and then be like, oh, thanks for telling me. So let's peel and core these. That's our apples are washed, now to core and peel. Or peel then core, because that would probably be an easier way around. Right, some of you out there might not know how to peel and core an apple, so I will show you on this one. Obviously I'm not going to show you on all of them. Um, you may prefer to use a peeler for this, but I prefer to use a knife. I have done for years, it's one of those things you get used to doing, isn't it? And obviously it's a fun game if you can get it all off in one, unlike that. Right, that all goes in. Now cut the apple in half, then in half again, so it's now in quarters. And then what I do, the way I do it, is I cut up from the core, like up from where the the stem would have been or the bottom, up, then, oh, I've not done this slowly like this before, then back down into, you'll see, there's this hard bit here which is all the core. So you can, to make life easier, turn it around and go back on yourself, and that then takes the core out. Okay, they're the apples we're going to turn into apple sauce or something like that. And as you'll see, they haven't browned too, too much. In the camera, they're a little bit browner than usual, well, than they do in real life. But what I do is I add some lemon juice to the, the water and it just stops them browning as much. Now, what I'm going to do, because I'm not going to use them straight away, is I'm going to get a plate, which will push them all down under the water and it will stop them browning totally. Okay, I'm going to try and get as many as I can to go under the water. And then... Put a little weight on it, there we go. Okay, so this is all of the bits of core and like ones that were way too small for me to mess about with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on a boil. There is about, in this part, about an inch and a half to two inches of water. I may add more. Um, basically what you wanna do is you wanna reduce this down. I'm probably gonna add a little bit more water anyway. But you wanna boil this up as much as you can. This will break down, it should, hopefully, shrink down as well if not i will move to another pan i haven't ever done it this packed before i'm hopefully going to be canning this uh some of this pectin for making other jams and so on in the future but let's light this up i'll put it on as um full heat for a bit until um it starts to actually boil the water okay because of the amount of um apples i've got there i'm going to add um about half a liter of water which is a little bit too much but i um this hob is so hot, I don't, and the the pan is cast iron. I don't want to start caramelising the actual apples to the side of it. I'd rather spend more time reducing it down than I do scraping bits of apple I couldn't use off the side. Right, basically, I'm just going to leave that now for between half an hour and forty minutes, and just check on it again. As you can see, it's all broken down into smaller bits, so it's all getting cooked up now. It's been about 20 minutes. Right, it's a good few hours later. This has completely cooled down, and I'm just reheating it again now. Um, it's quite forgiving, but, you know, with modern life, there's always something to do. So it, I'd left it for about 40 minutes, 
and then let it start to cool down. I'm just going to heat it up again, give it a mix, sort that out, and then I'm going to strain it off. Okay, here I've got my cheesecloth nano fibery thing, and all I'm going to do is pour all of that in, and I'm going to squeeze it out and allow basically the rennet water to drip through into my saucepan, which I'm fingers crossed is going to be big enough. I'm hoping that the pulp is going to take a lot of the mass away. One thing I'll say to you is if you want your rennet to be really clear, then use a microfiber thing like this and don't squeeze it out. Just let it, dry, let it um, drip for a bit and then put it to one side and it'll be a lot clearer than if you squeeze it out because you will get particulates coming out. But this is the fun bit and when I say that I mean that completely sarcastically. Right, now obviously I'm wearing gloves because this is going to be blinking hot. Just go careful. Yeah, I've even burning my hands through these. That's something to hang it on, I probably would. Right, that's just a steamer bit. I'm going to leave that to hopefully cool down and drain off a little bit, and then I will wring it out and so on in a minute. Right, since the last little clip, there's a few other things that have appeared. They're nothing to do with this video, but they are to do with a video I'm making. But um, now I'm back to trying to strain this out. It's still quite hot. Not as hot as it was though. Right. Now it's just a case of wringing it out. Now you don't have to wring it out this much. I just like to get the most out of what I've made, you know? Oh, it's still bloody warm though. It smells lovely. Now as you'll see, mine's got like a pink colour to it and that is because some of the apples were quite pink. Obviously using just normal Granny Smiths or whatever, you will not get that pink colour. That'll do. Okay, now once again, what we want to do is we want to get this on a boil and we want to reduce it down by half again. Okay, as you'll be able to see, it is literally like condensed down to about half its size now. So all I'm going to do now is put it in um, sterilized jars and that will last for about a year on the cupboard. You can also freeze it in ice, cu ice cube trays, which is what a lot of people like to do but I'd rather it on the cupboard so it's easier at hand because if it goes in my freezer, it's lost forever. You know, we find stuff in there we can't identify, you know? I'm not gonna bother showing you guys me putting it in jars or anything. I might show you it at the end just to go, ooh, look what I've done. But, um, you know, we've jarred enough up in this on this channel, so you know how it's, how it's done. If you don't, watch one of my other videos. Okay, that's me done. Thanks for watching. I will see you again soon. Bye.